Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh my soul. Bless the Lord, say bless the Lord, oh my soul, yeah. oh my soul, worship his holy name, his holy name, sin like never oh my oh my soul. His holy name. Worship his holy name. Worship his holy name. Won't you worship his holy name? God a bow before your throne glorious God beautiful King excellent God I bow before your throne bow before your throne Worship at your feet, bow before your throne. You are the glory of what bow before your throne. I can hear you singing, bow before your throne. You, 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 you are what bow before your throne. Yeah, we worship at your feet. We bow before your throne. You are. We bow before your throne. We worship at your feet. Hey, we bow, we bow, we bow. You are. You are the glory. Glorious God, beautiful King, excellent God, we bow before you from Saint Glorious God, beautiful King, excellent God. We bow before your throne. We bow before your Hey, worship on your feet. We bow, we bow. bow before your throne. You, 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 you. you are the glory of We bow God. before your throne. Before your throne. Worship at your feet. Worship on your feet. We bow before. Before your throne, hey, you are the glory of God. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. 
For you are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy. Oh, you are wonderful. You are wonderful. You are worthy. Deserve all the glory, Yahweh, Yahweh. You deserve of all the glory, hey. Yahweh, Yahweh. You deserve. You deserve all the glory, oh, Yahweh, Yahweh. You deserve all the glory. Deserve all the glory, Yahweh. Yahweh, Yahweh. You deserve. You deserve all the glory. You deserve all the glory, Yahweh. Yahweh. You deserve. You deserve all the glory, Yahweh. Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. Yahweh. You deserve all the glory. One more time. You deserve all the glory. Yahweh. Yahweh. You deserve all the glory. Yahweh. One more time. Let us worship him. You deserve. You deserve all the glory. Yahweh. Yahweh. One more time, you deserve all the glory. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Worship it, worship it. Deserve all the glory. Yahweh. Let's worship him one more time with us. You deserve all the glory. Yahweh. Yahweh. You deserve all the glory. Yahweh. Let's worship him again. Hallelujah. 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 The glory. Yahweh, Yahweh, you deserve all the glory. Yahweh, Yahweh, 
you deserve you deserve all the glory Yahweh Yahweh you deserve all the glory Lift up your hand and begin to worship him. Hallelujah. 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 We worship you. We worship you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We bless the name of the Lord, hallelujah. Our God is awesome God. He is a faithful God. We worship your holy name. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. You deserve all our praise. You deserve all our worship. Who is like unto you, our God? We adore you. We adore you. We adore you, Lord. 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 You are a good God, you are an awesome God. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Lord. Eba ya balakadu, lebo se te ye bala, mali brazali ba ya hakade, reba ya balakakadu, lebo su tabaya. We thank you, Lord, we thank you, Lord, we thank you, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We bless the name of the Lord our God. We bless the name of the Lord our God. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love and your kindness towards us. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for who you are. We are grateful for the gift of life. We thank you for preservation. Lord, we thank you for protection. Lord, we thank you for provision. We will never take anything for granted. Lord, we acknowledge you from January to today, you've been faithful. And from today to the end of the year, you will still be faithful. And therefore, we say all glory and honor and power belongs to you, our God. In the name of Jesus Christ, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Join me, let us acclaim it to him. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. One more time if you believe that. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever one more time for thine is the kingdom the power lift up your hand and shout hallelujah 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Spirit of God, thank you for your presence. Thank you for the anointing and the grace available for the service. And Lord, thank you for utterance you have given to every minister and everyone that administered the service today. And Lord, even as we come into your word, we pray for the spirit of understanding. And I ask of you, O oh God, for unction, 
unction to deliver, unction to speak, unction to minister. And that everyone that will hear your word today, whether here or online or in the micro church, wherever they are, they will be partakers of this grace. They will be partakers of this grace. In the name of Jesus Christ, may we be profitable hearers. May we be hearers and doers of the word. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that the lives of God's people be transformed today by the hearing of the word of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. For somebody today, we have a testimony. For somebody today, we have a testimony. If you believe you are the one, shout hallelujah. And so shall it be. And so shall it be. Now reach out to two or three people. Tell them, indeed, I am happy you are in the house of God. Two or three people, I say, reach out to them. I didn't say point to them. I see the glory of the Lord descending in his place to bless us one more time i see i see it glory of the lord descending in his place to bless now, now hold on reach out to somebody and prophesy that to that person i, I see, see the glory of the lord descending place to bless us one more time i have seen i see the glory of the lord Descending in the, his place uh, to bless you one more time. Uh, one more time. I, I see, I see. Glory Hallelujah. Descending in the, in the, his place to bless you one more time. I see. Uh, I see the glory of, of the Lord descending in the in the his place. Hallelujah. And so shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. And so shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. Please take your seats majestically because you are a royal priesthood. And believe the word that is coming to make a change, to make a difference. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our God is good. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Please take your seat. Now, we will, we will start now. Praise the Lord. When we started, from when we started, I said, when the word is about to come, no matter what you are doing in church, no matter what your assignment is, Grab a chair, take your Bible, take your pen, take your notebook. Amen. You see, anybody that is not in church till the time of the word, when they come, they should sort themselves out. Are you hearing me? Because coming to church late, we've talked about it here over and over, and it dishonors God. Now, we will not take because of lawbreaker and make those that are lawful to miss out. That's not right. Praise the Lord. 
So the moment the word is about to come, whether you are ushering, whether whatever you are doing, take your chair, sit down with your Bible, and receive. It is better that you yourself receive so that you can minister to those that are late than for you to miss out and they will miss out also. Praise the Lord. Now, last Sunday, we began something about spiritual gifts. And then we ended by looking at what is more important, whether tongues or prophesying or other gifts. Amen. And we are at the beginning of the month. At the beginning of the month. So throughout this month, I'm going to measure, listen to me, I'm going to measure on how you can receive spiritual gifts. Did you hear what I said? Throughout this month, I'm going to measure on how you can receive spiritual gift. Now, Paul said to the Corinthian church, I will not have you ignorant concerning spiritual gift. Praise the Lord. And the reason why that is important is because many people are ignorant about spiritual gifts. They don't even have an idea what it is. And that is because we are not being properly taught. And many don't even know they confuse spiritual gift with the fruit of the Spirit, which are two different things. And many Christians, they live out their life till they die without ever possessing one spiritual gift. And many of them end up even as deacon. Many of them end up as leaders, head of department. But they don't function in any of the gifts of the Spirit. But for you to function effectively in the house of God, for you to function effectively as a believer, you need to have at least one of the gift of the Spirit. You can even have two. You can have three. You can have four. As much as you have the ability to take. So, this month, it is important, very important, that you don't miss out any service. And every Wednesday this month is going to be praying and fasting for the entire church. Because what will happen is that when we get here on Wednesday evening, what we are teaching about, we are going to pray about. Amen. So that you yourself will be equipped and understand how you can function with spiritual things. Let's open to 1 Corinthians 12 where this message, Paul began to explain it to us, to the church. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 1. <clears throat> and because this topic is so important, I will try not to be very fast. Because there are people that are also having translations in Germany. And so it's important that everybody follows. So if I'm a bit slow, don't blame me. Amen? And I pray that the Spirit of God will keep me at the speed that everybody will be able to follow. Because this topic, it is very, very important. And let me say this. To all the leaders in this ministry, all the leaders in this ministry, for you, this message is a different thing altogether. And let me say why it's a different thing altogether. At the end of this teaching, at the end of this teaching, and at the end of the year, giving everybody enough time, you must walk your way to have at least one or two of the gift of the Spirit. I have realized by the Spirit that any leader that does not possess any of these gifts 
is always a problem in the church. It's always a problem in the church. And I will explain that to you as we progress, especially in leaders meeting. So, for the leaders, and that's why I said that no matter what you do, as the word is coming, sit down, understand the word. In God's family church, from next year, if Jesus tarries, nobody will be as a leader. Nobody will stand as a leader if you don't effectively function with minimum one or two of some of the things that Paul has written to us. Is that clear? That excludes praying in tongues. Amen? Because a lot of you will come to me and say, but I pray in tongues. Is it not one of the gifts? It is one of the gifts, but it's not one of the requirements. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let me say this. Don't come to me and say, Daddy, I, I, I can pray in tongues now. So I have gotten one gift. So I should be a leader. I, I, because you already pray in tongues anyway now. So praying in tongues is excluded from the requirement. God said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Paul says, I do not want you to be ignorant. And it means that knowledge, knowledge is important. I'm getting a report also, no audio. What is going on with the transmission? I'm getting a report that there's no audio. Praise the Lord. It's back now and please focus. Praise the Lord. So ignorance can be very expensive and I may even add deadly. Ignorance can be expensive and even what? Deadly. You know, Somebody died, a Christian lady died, and the pastor went to ask, Lord, why did this person die? This person was not supposed to die, at least I know. Why did the person die? And the Lord said, the reason why this person died was because there was nobody praying for her. Are you hearing me? She died not because of the sickness. She died not because of the devil. She died because of spiritual abandonment. Nobody was praying. And so when we talk about the word of God, the things of God, the spirit of God, you need to key into it because your life, your life, your growth, your advancement may depend on it. Amen? It is true that many people don't care about their Christian life. They think that it's a casual thing. They deal with Christian work as if it is one of those things. 
but 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 that is the danger and that is where the devil wants you to be it's not a casual work spiritual work is more important than your physical work because what is in the spirit controls what is in the physical amen so if in the spirit you are bankrupt invariably no matter how much money you have on earth you will still be bankrupt did you hear what i said if spiritually you are bankrupt you are bankrupt you are void of revelation you are void of knowledge it means no matter how much you possess no matter how much you acquired you will still come to that bankruptcy because we manifest physically what we are spiritually and all the natural things we see all the physical things we see they are controlled from the spiritual and so the more spiritually you are in the things of God the better your life will be the better your life amen let's take the area of divine health many people are going through all kind of sickness and disease children of God leaders pastors everybody they go through sickness and disease and all that but if you come to the revelation that God said that you cannot be sick you cannot be sick a Christian is not supposed to be sick when you get that revelation you adjust yourself you readjust yourself and you say now I have known the truth you can break with sickness and disease permanently in your life as a result of revelation there are also that people that say that there's nothing wrong with sickness that everybody gets sick and so there's nothing wrong with it and so they are expected to be sick and so what are you saying everybody gets sick everybody does not get sick those that wants to get sick get sick hear me hear me well praise the lord if you don't want to get sick you will not get sick just like i'm teaching about spiritual gift i also teach about how could, how you can live in supernatural divine health i teach it here you can be in supernatural health without sickness without disease without vitamin you can be in it but if you don't know it you will condition your mind you will condition your body that everybody gets sick and that's where the devil wants you to be the moment the devil gets you to a point where you accept where you believe that everybody gets sick he has welcomed you home praise the lord so that is why knowledge is important and likewise talking about spiritual things you need to know that you need it you need to know that you need it the reason why it's a gift is because it's free <laughs> praise the lord did you hear what i just said the reason why it is a gift is because it's what free you can't buy it you don't need to buy it all you need to do is desire it amen so paul says in verse one i do not want you to be ignorant about spiritual things so the key thing in getting the gift of the spirit you need knowledge that's the number one thing you need understanding about the gifts of the spirit praise the lord and then the bible tells us that verse 4 there are diversities of gifts but the same spirit there are differences of ministries but the same lord and there are diversities of activities but it is the same God who works all in all. So you understand that from the word of God we have diversities, we have differences, we have diversities. Praise the Lord. And it is still the same God who works all in all. So don't just say because 
You don't believe like that person that is not of God. The Bible is clear. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. Verse 5. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. Shout hallelujah. is given to each uh -uh. I want to read this again but the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for what no 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 I want to hear that for what but the manifestation of the spirit is given for the profit of what? The profit of what? Who is all? Who is all? Who is Paul writing to? You see, there are key words you cannot afford to miss. And when you begin to desire spiritual things, get revelation. Get understanding. First, Paul says to us there are diversity from verse 4. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. Verse 5, there are differences of ministries, but the same law. Verse 6, and there are diversities of activities. And when we go through the gifts, when we go through the gift, you will understand why I said that praying in tongue is not one of the requirements for you to be a leader in God's family church. Because of all the gifts of the Spirit, praying in tongues is the only one that profits one person. Hello? Are you hearing me? Praying in tongues, who does it benefit? Who does it benefit? One person. And who is that person? Who is that person? But the Bible said that the gift of the Spirit is for the profiting of. But then, when you pray in tongues, who do you profit? Huh? You see where the problem is? Yourself. Yourself. Because the Bible says that when you pray in tongues, you do what? You edify yourself. That is the only gift of the Spirit that is selfish. And when Paul categorized the gifts, whether if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, if you look at from the beginning of the verse, when he listed the gift of the Spirit, he put it as the last. If you go towards the ending of the chapter also, where Paul mentioned that, he also put praying in tongues also as a last. But you know what we did? We went through them. We sorted them out. We took the last and put where? One. <laughs> Amen. And we tell people, if, if you have the gift of the Holy Spirit, if you've been baptized with the Holy Ghost, he said, without the evidence of praying in tongues, then you are not baptized with the Holy Ghost. Now, people teach that. Praise the Lord. Did you hear what I said? 
People teach that, but it's not true. It's not true. Amen. It's not true. <laughs> Praying in tongues is a gift as much as other gifts, isn't it? Amen. Come on. Are you hearing me? I know that today is like you are in a lecture room. But it's a lecture that will profit you. You can change your life with the lecture today. Or next Sunday. Or the upper Sunday. Because for this month, we are going to be talking about this. And what I want to see is that before the end of this year, by the grace of God, that some of you will be flowing in the gift of the Spirit in different manners. Walking and manifesting in it. Because that is actually what changes your life. So, Paul said, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one. the same spirit. Is that in your Bible? What is the first one? What is the second one? So you even see that when we are talking about the gift of the spirit, the word occupied number one, number two position. Do you see it? The first one is the word of wisdom. The second one is the word of knowledge. But you see, Many people are after signs and wonders. There's nothing wrong with that. It's there. Let's continue. One is giving the word of wisdom through the spirit. To another, the word of knowledge through the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healings by the same spirit. To another, the working of miracles. Do you see where miracle goes into? But to another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. So, tongues barely made it on that list. Is that in your Bible? Don't say that's pastor's Bible. Is that in your Bible? Say praise the Lord. Now, tongues and interpretation of tongue, is it the two last ones in your Bible, yes or no? Yes or no? And what is the first two? So, why do you go for tongues only? No, why does everybody settle with tongues? You see, you see, that is the problem. Because we have not been taught on the basics of the spiritual gift. And my prayer is that from today, even you, you will become wise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, this is something that every believer should go for. This is what every believer should go for. The question is, I will read to you what the word of wisdom is. Amen? The word of wisdom is a supernatural utterance. The word of wisdom is a supernatural utterance at a given moment through the spirit. The word of wisdom is a supernatural utterance at a given moment through the spirit. Supernaturally, supernaturally, Disclosing the mind, purpose, and way of God as applied to a specific situation or circumstances. So what is the word of wisdom? The word of wisdom is a supernatural revelation of the mind. The mind of God. The mind of God concerning a situation, concerning a circumstance, concerning something that ordinarily you will not know except by revelation. It is a word of wisdom. The Lord minister. It is by the Spirit. The Holy Ghost gives it to you. The Holy Ghost reveals to you what the situation is, what the circumstances. 
Praise the Lord. Now, once I was about to minister to a lady, and as I was just about to minister, the Spirit of the Lord told me that this person is dedicated, was dedicated to demons by the parent, was dedicated. Now, there was no way I would have known that because I don't know this person. I mean, apart from just in church. And so, supernaturally, the Spirit of God reveals to you that this person has been dedicated. And when somebody has been dedicated to the idols or to shrine or to whatever, you don't just, listen, you don't just cast the devil out like that. Because the devil has the legitimacy to occupy that place. How many of you know what C of O is? What is C of O? Certificate. Uh, there's also certificate of operation. Huh? Praise the Lord. When parents take their children for any reason and dedicate the child, dedicate the child to demons, maybe on a shrine, altar, to any idol, listen, they are practically saying that this child, the devil has a seal of all. The devil have the right of what? Occupancy on that child. And there are many like that that are dedicated. Many. Even there are people in church that are dedicated like that. Praise the Lord. But the problem is that many of those who don't even know they were dedicated because it happens when they were just born. Less than a year old. They carry them to the shrine. And they dedicate them. And they do and, you know, ritual and sacrifice and all that over that child. And the child grows up. Never ever been. The child never been to a native doctor by himself or by herself. The child never knew anything about a native doctor. So if the child is born again and you say to the child, have you been to a native doctor? Say, mm -mm. Mm -mm. Never been. Amen. Because the child does not know. And very often, while the child is growing up, the parents still go on to pay the sacrifice. They go to pay the maintenance fee. And they don't tell the child the transaction. Amen? Sometimes, when the child is even doing well, they will tell the child, send money, I'm broke. They will, the child will send the money, or their son or their daughter will send the money, they will go and buy the things for the sacrifices and they will tell the native doctor the person is not here but the person has sent this money for me to do it on the behalf and the child never knows praise the lord and so that sacrifice continues continues until listen to this until when the mother or the father or the parent passes away. Six months, there was no maintenance. One year, there was what? No maintenance. The devil will even give some credit. One and a half year, no maintenance. Two years, there was no maintenance. Then the devil said, okay, I will come and take it by myself. That is when the trouble begins in the life of the person. Are you hearing me? You see, Thank God you are in church today. You can look into your life. You may know you need help. Are you hearing me? As long as the parents are alive and pay the dues and pay the sacrifices, the devil will keep quiet. The devil knows that one day they will die. And so when they die, when they die, the devil will give you some credit six months, one year, and then after the devil will come to collect it by himself. Suddenly, what has never happened to you will begin to happen. You say, but it has never happened to me. It has never happened to me. It, never... it can also be that your parents are alive but refuse to pay. How does it happen? Listen, this is not part of the message, but as a, or the Spirit lead me, I need to speak it because some of you here may need help. Or some of you watching online may need help. Praise the Lord. Also, also, the parents may be alive. The parents got born again. They came to church. They got born again. Praise the Lord. 
and they read from the Bible. If any man be, a, be in Christ, he is what? A new a brand new person. And then they say to themselves, well, I've gotten born again. Now I am in Christ. And so now I will not give the sacrifice anymore. I will not give the ritual anymore. I am in Christ. I'm a new creation. And they say, no more payment and all that. Let me tell you, you are in serious trouble. It doesn't work like that. Amen. Did you hear me? It is true that if any man be in Christ, he's what? A new creation. When you get born again, locate your pastor. And say, pastor, I've been somewhere before now. Are you hearing me? You did a transaction and the devil is very legitimate and very legalistic. That's what you need to know. The devil is very legalistic. And so, he will hold the sea of four you gave to him. Are you hearing me? You can even say you got born again and then you say you are a Christian now. You are not paying the sacrifice anymore. The devil will say, okay, I will leave you. I will go to take my property. Are you hearing me? I will go and take my property and they will attack the child. Suddenly, you will see that the, attack, the child will have something like epilepsy or strange sickness or strange disease or something that is incurable. The devil say, you want to play a game with me? I will show you. So what do you do? When you get born again, as quickly as possible, go to your pastor. Sit down say, pastor, before I became born again, this is where I've been to. I have dedicated my child or my children. How do I come out of it? Praise the Lord. You will come out of feet by the power of God. You will be delivered from it. But if you don't do that, and then you sit where you are and say, if any man be in Christ is a new creation, I am born again. Thank you. Satan, go to hell. Satan will say, me? Satan will say, you, you are telling me to go to hell. We did transaction together. Praise the Lord. Listen. Let today be an eye-opener for you. And it's even better if that thing can be dealt with while the person that did it is still alive. When the mother and the father that did that transaction are still alive, that's the best time to cut it off. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because the pastor now will ask you, where is the child you dedicated? The child will come. And you will bring the child forward. And you will stand before the pastor and the pastor will stand in the name of Jesus Christ and deal with that thing and deal with it when you buy a property with seal of O it's not easy for anybody to take it from you true or false now are you hearing me if you have a property with seal of O with seal of O are you hearing me even if government demolish it they will pay you true or false that is to show you the legality of dedication that's to show you the power of altar. One day we're going to deal with the power of altar, dedication. So, what we are talking about now is that the gift of the Spirit that God gives to His children, it is to enable us to operate in ways and manner that ordinary people cannot function like that. And so, you have the word of wisdom that reveals to you what you ought to do, what you ought to do in any given situation and circumstances. And then you have the word of knowledge. Praise the Lord. The word of knowledge is what we call like the rhema. Amen? The word of knowledge comes from the logos. What is an example of that? When the devil came to tempt Jesus, and Jesus said to the devil, it is written. Praise the Lord. It is written. Now the word of knowledge is drawing from the logos of the word. You draw from it to deal with circumstances and situations without necessarily getting a revelation from the spirit of God. But because we are in the word and we are students of the word, when a situation comes up that we are, that we are familiar with, especially with the word, we can use the word and deal with it without 
necessarily waiting for the Spirit of God to reveal it to us. For instance, when somebody says, I'm afraid, I can't sleep, and calls the pastor, and the pastor says, what's the problem? He says, I'm afraid, and the pastor says, it is written, God has not given us the spirit of fear. That is word of knowledge. It is specific, it is direct, it is called the rhema, it comes from the logos, and it works. Praise the Lord. And that's why the Bible said, let the word of Christ dwell richly. Because rhemas are drawn from the logos. Are you hearing me? Rhemas are drawn from where? From the logos. Remember what I told you last Sunday? The written word connects us to the living Lord. And the living Lord connects us to the living God. And so if you have the word at all times, that's more than enough to deal with every situation. And God started with the gift of the Spirit with number one position, word, revelation from him, word of wisdom. Number two, from his logos, the living word, praise the Lord. And he tells you that no matter what you do, nothing will, nothing will overcome the word of God in any other. And so, when you don't spend time in the world, you are cheating yourself. Praise the Lord. Have you noticed sometimes when you are praying, when you are praying, the scripture will just come into your spirit. Even though you are praying in tongues, the scripture will come and you begin to utter that scripture. Utter it. Utter it. The scripture is dealing with the situation and circumstances around you. Amen. And the Holy Ghost can only do that if that word is in you. If the word is not in you, there's nothing for the Holy Ghost to bring up to you. Words of wisdom. Words of knowledge. These are the starting place. And the Bible said, it is given for the profiting of all. For the what? Profiting of all. It is given for the benefit of all. Every gift of the spirit apart from praying in tongues is given for the profiting of all. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And then we go on we see that he says to another the working of miracles to another prophecy to another the signing of spirit verse 10 to another different kinds of tongues to another the interpretation of tongues verse 11 but one and the same spirit works all these things amen distributing to each one individually as he wills is that in your bible i want you to underline that but one and the same spirit works all these things the holy ghost works all these gifts distributing to each one individually as he wills distributing to everybody as what not as you will not as a pastor will but as who wills as he wills so you are getting some basic it is for the profiting of all it is the spirit that gives to all as he wills there are differences diversities of activities of ministries of gifts but the same spirit works in all but it is for the profiting of all it is for the benefit of all and it is the spirit that gives to all as he wills it's the holy ghost that gives it amen nobody you can buy it from any man no church gives it it is given by the spirit the gift of the spirit is given by the spirit of god shout hallelujah verse 12 the scripture begins something that is interesting he says for as the body is one and has many members but all the members of that one body being many are one body so also is christ so now church comes into focus here because the church is the body of christ isn't it the church is the body of christ and so paul is saying that all these gifts that we are talking about 
They are functional in the body. They are meant for the body. They are exercised in the body. It is for the advancement. It is for the progress of the body. Amen? And so, if you are looking for the gift of the Spirit, make sure you are located in the body of Christ to begin with. Make sure you have a location in the body of Christ. By location, I'm not just talking about coming to church. I am talking about being rooted, being planted in the house of God. Many people don't understand it and that is why they don't function and that's why they don't receive even though they fast and pray and ask. The key word you will read from this chapter is the body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Praise the Lord. So if you are not rooted, if you are not planted in a local church, you can never function in any of this gift. Full stop. Are you hearing me? You know, I will take you on a journey through these verses. From where Paul started. There is no verse. There is no verse in this chapter we are talking about now. All the way to verse 20, 28. Where he talks about the diverse gifts of ministries and ministers. Okay? There is no verse that didn't talk about the body or a member of the body. Not one. Shall we take a journey? Praise the Lord. Verse 12. For as the body is one and has many members. Is that, you see there? Verse 13. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body. That's 13, right? Verse 14. For in fact the body is not one member but many. You see there? Verse 15. Because I am not a hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? That's twice in verse 15, right? Verse 16. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I am not of the body. Is that there? Verse 17. If the whole body, verse 17, isn't it? Verse 18. But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body, just as he pleased. You can see it there, right? Verse 19. And if there were all one member, where will the body be? Verse 20. But now, indeed, there are many members, yet what? One body. Verse 21 is the only one. And verse 20. And verse 23, 26. There are the only two verses that does not have body there, but they have members. Amen. Now, if Paul emphasizes something, he just mentioned the gift. And the next thing now, he began to mention the body, the body, the body, the body, the body, the body. Almost in every verse. Almost in every verse. What does that tell you? So, you cannot receive the gift of the Spirit if you are not actively planted and rooted as a member in the body. Go and check it. Don't just say pastor was running with these things. I'm not running. I am slowing down. You see, the word of wisdom is supernaturally given by the spirit. Every believer, every believer is supposed to function with the word of knowledge. That is supposed to be our area of defense. Are you hearing me? Every Christian is supposed to do what? Function with the word of knowledge. Every Christian. Because there is a word for every situation. There is a word for every circumstance. There is a word. You see, the word of wisdom belongs to the realm of the spirit. That way we cannot see or understand. That's the word of wisdom. It belongs to that realm. The word of wisdom, when we are dealing with something, we don't know how it happened. We don't know how it came about. And the spirit will say, Bah! This is what you do. Praise the Lord. Especially when you are dealing with demonic situations. You need the spirit to give you revelation. The spirit will just tell you, this is what to do. 
But the word of knowledge is given unto us. Don't you think that God is wiser than us in all things? He knows that we cannot all function in the word of wisdom. And so he, he put the one of wisdom that is spiritual. But he put the one that every one of us have access to. And both of them are equally as powerful. Amen? It is written. It is written. It is written. Praise the Lord. Exodus 23-25. What does he say? Hello? Exodus. No, I don't want a butchered version. I don't want a butchered version. <clears throat> okay? Exodus 23. 25. Not butchered version. Praise the Lord. Are we all there? You see? I'm about to give you a word of knowledge concerning the area of sickness. And now many of you don't have Bible. And so when you when you are about to guess, you say, what is it that pastor said? Oh, was it Genesis? No, I think it's Deuteronomy. No, I think it's Joshua. No, it's Exodus. The devil will know that even you, you are not sure. Praise the Lord. I'm about to give you the word of knowledge concerning divine health. I'm about to give you, truly, by the grace of God, the Lord has gifted me in the area of the word of knowledge and also the teaching ministry. Praise the Lord. And then, you also exercise yourself in other gift as you grow. Because you can, you can key into any gift later on as you desire it. But now, I just want to show you something. Something now. Exodus 23-25. Are we there? So, 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 you shall do what? No, 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 no. Read it for me. Verse 25 completely. Read it again. Can it be true? Can this be true? Wait to. Wait to. He said, I will bless your bread and your water. Right? Right? He will bless your bread and your water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of you, right? Is that what he said? Is that what he said? It's not what he said. I know that's what you answer me. It's not what he says. What does he say? And you shall serve. You, 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 now you told me that he says <laughs> he will bless our bread and our water, and he will take. It's not what he said. He says, and you, who is you? Say me. Say me. My whole self. God said, if I, I don't know your name, call your name. If I, call your name. If I, we serve the Lord. The Lord will take what? He will take it away. The Bible says it is not possible for God to lie. It's not possible. And he has exalted his word above all things. Amen. The Bible tells us in Mark 16 and this sign shall follow them that believe. And this sign shall follow them that believe. So whatever you believe, we will see the sign in your life. In the New Testament, let's go to Matthew chapter 8. This is word of knowledge I'm giving to you. This is word of knowledge I'm giving to you. And if you will believe it and if you use it, your life will be different from today in Jesus' name. Amen. Matthew chapter 8. When we read from verse 16, Matthew chapter 8 from verse 16. Hmm. 
Praise the Lord. Verse 16. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word, and healed all who were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, 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 what did he say? He himself took our infirmities and bore our sins. Is that in your Bible? That, who took it? And so, and so, listen, I don't know how you look at the word of God. He himself took our what? Infirmities and bore our sicknesses. He himself. He himself. He took it. Praise the Lord. That's a very simple English to me. Praise the Lord. Brother Philip, come here. Come. Listen. Very simple. Stand here. Look this way. Is this your Bible? Thank you. Can you give it to me? Thank you for giving me your Bible. Are you giving it to me as a gift or just for a moment? For a moment. So he doesn't even have enough faith to dash me his Bible, which is good. So now, for the moment he has given it to me, it doesn't belong to him, right? Where is your Bible? It's with me. No, it's with you. You gave it to me. Can you prove it? Yeah, prove it. Listen, he said he just handed it over to me. Praise the Lord. Please, go about. Tell people that you have your Bible with you. Go about. Go and tell people that you have your Bible. You see how strange it is for him. But the Bible said that Jesus himself bore our infirmities and took our sicknesses. And yet we still go about saying that we are sick. No, does it make sense? Who is a fool here? It is written in the Bible that he himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. He took it. He carried it on himself. Now, it would be foolish for this man to go and say, I have my Bible with me. My friend stand. I have my Bible with me. I have my Bible with me. I have my Bible. What is he doing? He's lying. The problem with a lie is that over time you believe it as a truth. Over time. Except, and that's what the Bible says, and the light shines in darkness. And the light shines in darkness. So, I have to come to Philip and say, Philip, you don't have your Bible anymore. I took your Bible. But since you say you have it, since you've been claiming that you have it, take back your Bible. Praise the Lord. And so when somebody, a Christian born of God, goes about saying he has malaria, he has typhoid, he has malaria, he has typhoid, and he goes on and on and on, and the Lord Jesus said, okay, since he won't let me have it, take it back. Devil, we said, I'm at your command, Lord. The devil come and said, you said you have it. You said you have it, take it back. As simple as it sounds, that is what is happening to many Christians. Are you hearing me? In the realm of the spirit, there is a law. There is a law. And that law says that you will have whatever you say. You don't know it. There is a law of the spirit. That law says, and you shall have whatever you Shall I show it to you? Mark 11. Well, we are... <laughs> Verse 24. And it's Jesus that's teaching us this. This principle. Jesus is the one teaching us this principle. Praise the Lord. I 
Are we there? Mark 11 verse 25. Are we there? Let's read it together. No, 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 no. Again. Again. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. And you will have them. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Verse 7. Are we there? Matthew chapter 7 verse 7. What does it say? <laughs> uh huh. Is that in your Bible? So, when a Christian says that he is sick, he will get sick. When the Christian says, I have nobody to help me, he will end up with nobody to help him. Are you hearing me? Because you will have whatever you say. He said, law of the spirit. Somebody say, what happens now when I'm feeling like uh, when I'm feeling symptoms of malaria, symptoms of typhoid. The question is that which medical school taught you the symptoms? How did you get to know the symptoms of malaria and type? Listen, listen. <laughs> listen. Hey, Lord, help us. Listen, we have a lot of work to do this month. Seriously. Where did you learn the symptoms of malaria from? Who taught you the symptoms? Who taught you? We know that the devil is the author of every sickness and disease, isn't it? Except the one that comes upon you by self-abuse. Self-abuse is that you're looking for money so much. You walk to, instead of 23, instead of 24 hours a day, you walk 26 hours in a day. And so you walked, you broke your body down. How did you know the symptoms of sickness? You were not meant to be there. Do you know the symptoms of the Holy Ghost? No, do you have you ever seen the symptoms of the Holy Ghost? Why are you so qualified in knowing the symptoms of malaria, typhoid, rheumatism? By the way, how did you get to know old people's sickness? Which Bible told you about old people's sickness? No, you know, the world has corrupted you so much and it's becoming difficult, difficult to clean you. You know why? Because you refuse to be clean. You come to church once today. You won't come on Wednesday. By Monday, you are back with your friends in the world. And so they will pour a lot of junk into you. Pour a lot of junk into you. And then by the time we see you on Wednesday or Sunday again, all the things we taught you today would have been erased by them. And they will put a new one on you again. And then you go out on Monday again. Now they fill you with junk again. And then you come back on Sunday. And they will feed you. And then you don't come for three Sundays. And they have you as a hostage. They will feed you so much so by the time you come to church, you say, this place feels funny. They say, welcome back. No, do you understand how this thing works? Many of you are looking like this, shocked. It is true. God said, if you serve me, I will remove sickness. I will remove disease. I will bless your bread. I will bless your water. In verse 26, he says, No one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren. He says, The number of your days, I will feel God saying, Nobody will die prematurely. All this is not when you fast. All this is not when you pray. All this is not when you do it. All this is when you serve me. Serve me, and I will deliver you. Why is it so difficult? All the gifts that we are reading from. 1 Corinthians 12. One thing, they are all working and operational in the body. In the body. So, if you're ever going to work in any of the gifts of the Spirit, you must be an active member of the body of Christ. Full stop. 
If you are not, you cannot receive it. You know the problem with tongues. You can fake tongues. Yeah. You can fake tongues, and there are many fake tongues. Do you pray in tongues? Yeah, pray. Buy me rice, give me rice. Buy me rice, give me rice. Do you pray in tongues? Yes. That's not tongues, so. But you know what? Because it's a spiritual thing, we don't judge anybody's tongue. Because it doesn't affect the church, it affects only you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So when you do a song, we sleep off. Amen. Praying in tongues is good. Amen. It's good. You should pray in tongues. But you should also have word of knowledge. Word of wisdom. Praise the Lord. You should build up yourself in that. You should. This month, I pray, don't miss any service. Wednesday, take our time to fast. When we come here on Wednesdays this month, we may do about 20, 10, 15 minutes exhortation. We are going to pray. And our prayer is, Lord, distribute the gift of your spirit as you will in our midst. That's going to be our prayer. Lord, I want to be a carrier. I want to be able to express this gift in my life. Lord, I want you to bestow upon me this very gift of the spirit. Wow. If it is profiting for the church, you should have it. You should have it. Locate the word of knowledge in the air. Listen, I just told you about the one of sickness. Two words. You can be never. You know, you can never be sick again. Should I tell you the one of prosperity? No, should I tell you the word of knowledge for prosperity? I should tell you. You raise your hand. I should tell you. I'm not ready. Praise the Lord. Everything about money needs money. Uh, is it not true? Uh -huh, so we should take our tithe and offering. And that does not mean I'm going to tell it. Praise the Lord. There is a very simple word of knowledge for prosperity. You will never lack. You will never be poor. Seriously. Very simple. It's so simple that some of you, if I say it now, you say, ah! But I'm not saying Praise the Lord. Say I'm blessed. Please, let's stand on our feet. Time has gone. Time has gone so much. Praise the Lord. I didn't want us to overstay 11.30, but let's manage quickly and close. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Say I am blessed. I am blessed. Say I am blessed. I am blessed. Hallelujah. Lift up your hand and say thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Mali brosundala. Le brosutaya habale. Era baya bala katole borosandele brosutaya. Mali brosundele borosubaya kakatole baya. Re baya bala katole boro. Era basa teke yele bala katala habala. Male bro sondele boro sahabaya. Re baya baya katele boso to ye bala kakatole baya. Male bro sondele boro sa. Re baya baya bala kakatole boso ndeketele. Have I forgotten you? Hey, the spirit is good. I've forgotten him. Please go back. It's amazing. I didn't see him again. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Say God is good. Say the spirit is good. Say the spirit is wonderful. Ah! Truly. You know, one day I was in my room. I was studying. I was studying. This is something that happened. Ask mommy. As I was studying in my room, 
Mommy brought somebody to come and fix the lock of my door. A carpenter came with mommy. They fixed it and did everything, and they left. And later, mommy told me that they fixed it. I said, when? She said, when I was there. Sincerely speaking, I was so into what I was studying. This is the life of the spirit transforms you. I didn't know that mommy stepped into that room. Talk less of with a carpenter. And they fixed the door handle. I didn't hear. I didn't see. I didn't know. And I was so shocked. The spirit can take you from the world. Try it. Shout hallelujah. Let's bring out our tithe and our offering. Praise the Lord. And we have Pastor Isaac and the very dear wife with us today. Shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please give the microphone to Pastor Isaac to bless our tithe and our offering today in the name of Jesus Christ. Say, I am blessed. Wherever you are online, you can also see the church account details online, whether in Munich or here. And you can also send directly to the account as the Lord directs you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Our Father and our God, we thank you for your word that has come to us once again. The word of life has come to us. I will never remain the same again in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, all we are asking for, O oh Lord, that you make us doers of your words in the name of Jesus. Amen. As we hear the grace to do accordingly, Heavenly Father, let it be released upon us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you for the opportunity that I have granted every one of us, O oh Lord, to come before you with our seed. This we present before you, Heavenly Father, I will sanctify it in the name of Jesus. Amen. That this seed will be used for the work of the kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And for every hand that is lifted today, this hand will not go down. Amen. And this hand will not lack. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And for those who have come with their tight Heavenly Father, we thank you because we are faithful to your word. That as we bring our tight before you, O Lord, that the windows of heaven is going to be opened. Amen. And you are going to pour your blessings upon us, Father. Let it be so for every title today in the name of Jesus. Amen. And let the devourer be rebuilt for their sake in the name of Jesus. Amen. This offering is sanctified in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please, I have one thing to say to each and every one of you. First Corinthians 12. Dwell upon it this week. I didn't just say read it. Dwell upon it. Amen? And if you are somebody that studies well, read because in the next three weeks, we're going to be dealing with 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14. Amen? So I'm giving you expo. Please read them, study them. And then on Wednesday, I said that the whole church, we are having praying and fasting on Wednesday. Every Wednesday of this month is praying and fasting for the entire ministry. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Those of you in Germany, take note. Because I know that some of you don't play with your food. But you have to obey instruction. Wednesday... Every week of the month of September is for praying and fasting. And we are going to use 1 Corinthians 12, 1 Corinthians 13, 1 Corinthians 14, reading through the scriptures and praying through the scriptures. It will change you. If you will just obey this instruction and do it, I assure you, you will be among those that will testify the end of this month. God will do wonders in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. So please, follow the instruction. 
and you will see what God will do in your life. Praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. And I would like to inform the church that this day a new baby was born unto us. Amen. The baby, the baby boy came the early part of this morning. Amen. And so Brother John and Sister Lizzie, they have a second boy born today. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Our God is good. And there will be more and more news in Jesus' mighty name. Those of you that are online for wedding, on wed for wedding next year, we already, some of you are already appointed for next year. Be prepared. Praise the Lord. Because next year will be quite a wonderful year. We will have mass wedding and massive weddings. Praise the Lord. There are those that are well over grown for marriage. We have to find a wife and give them so that we can bring them out of bachelorship. Shout hallelujah. So we are the church of God. We are the body of Christ. There are people that if we look at them, just like Jesus had compassion at that man at the pool of Bethesda, if we look at them and we see that their wallet has been afflicted for such a long time, the church will arrange a wife for them. And many will ask, what will they eat if they get married? Let them get married first. Praise the Lord. So next year will be <laughs> very wonderful. There are some weddings that will take place in pastor's office. There are, there are some that will take place on Super Sunday to cut down cost. There are some that will take place on Saturday, isn't it? Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, Brother John and Sister Lizzie, a big congratulation. Hallelujah. <laughs> and Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. Praise the Lord. Please take your seat just for one more minute or so before we close. Now, we cannot close this service without welcoming some people. If today is your first time of worshiping with us this Super Sunday, Somebody invited you, somebody called you, somebody sent you a message. But if today is your first time of worshiping with us, please raise your hand wherever you are. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please stand, stand on your feet. Please stand. God bless you. We are delighted to have you. God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our God is a good God. Even those of you in the micro church, we welcome you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are delighted that you are here. Please, please take your Bible, take your bag. On the right hand, we have a seat specially reserved for you. Amen. Please, ushers, direct them. Please take your seat. And then we are going to have somebody to share something with you just for a few minutes after service. We are more than delighted. We are delighted to have you here. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Say thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus. We are happy to see you. And we want to say that if you don't have a local church where you are actively in participation, we want to encourage you to prayerfully consider God's family church as your home church, as your family. And we'll be more than delighted to welcome you in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. And we are happy you are here, and we hope and believe that you will come again and again in Jesus' mighty name. Shout hallelujah! Rise on your feet wherever you are. Lift up your hand and give God praise and give God glory. Thank him for this word. As the word concerning the gifts of the Spirit comes to us, it means that the Holy Ghost is ready to give unto us, to give unto us, the free gift of the Spirit. And you will be a possessor of the gift of the Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. For in Jesus' mighty name we have given thanks. I bless you. This word you have heard will stay in you. This word will abide in you. 
this word will transform you in the name of jesus christ i prophesy unto you that this week shall be a supernatural week for you i pray for divine encounters this week i pray for supernatural manifestation of god's presence in your life i bless you from the peace of god in the name of jesus christ i declare unto you that it is well with you this week it is well with you this month the glory of the lord shall be seen upon your life father i take authority in your name right now i rebuke every sickness and every disease in our midst i declare that the healing hand of god shall come upon anyone that needs a healing right now receive your healing in jesus mighty name receive your deliverance in jesus mighty name i command that sickness to leave your body right now i command that affliction to leave your body right now in the name of jesus christ you are blessed you are blessed and you are blessed in jesus precious name in jesus precious name shout hallelujah now remember the assignment read first corinthians 12 compulsorily now by by grace of god you can go to 13 and 14 it's not long praise the lord so that when we come on wednesday or on sundays you will already be in tune with the message praise the lord so how to receive the gift of the spirit is going to be our message for the entire month and we're going to pray we are going to hear the word and there is no way your life will be the same in jesus mighty name let us share the grace globally may the grace of our lord jesus christ rest and abide with us now forevermore amen surely god's goodness and mercy are following us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the presence of the most high god forever and ever god bless you please just